um, I went ahead and so I have my little sketch paper. These sketches that we're going to be doing weekly can be done in or should be done in your little sketchbook in the six by four sketchbook. Um, I'm using that big, the big kind of uh, the nine by 12, um, the nine by 12 sketchbook that, that I showed you guys, just so I have a bigger page to, to work with. But you guys can go ahead and use that sketchbook. That's what that sketchbook is, um, is designed for. Or that's the intention of having that, that sketchbook. Okay. So what I'm covering or what I want to go over is the very, very basic fundamentals of um, drawing with two point perspective. Okay. Um, two point perspective, we need, we have essentially, essentially like three parts to it. We have what we call a horizon line. Call this horizon line. Um, and then we have what we call vanishing points. Now, the, the point or the idea behind two point perspective is that things kind of bleed off or they kind of vanish off into kind of, they vanish off into the horizon, okay? So if we were to look at, you know, um, the best way to understand the horizon line is if you've been on the beach and you're looking out, we all see that line where the sky and the ocean kind of meet. That's your horizon line. Okay. And everything will essentially, you know, everything that we have will essentially, if you were to have one big building, and it kind of vanishes off to the horizon line. Okay. And that's the concept. That's the idea of a two point perspective. That's essentially it. So, for example, if we had an object that was at eye height, at you know, at our at our eye height, it would be an object that would run right across the horizon line. Sorry, I know that the zoom that the camera keeps kind of refocusing. Um, from here, things vanish off into these vanishing points. Right. And so if I was to draw a cube, we can go ahead and go from one edge and have that draw out to the vanishing points, out to the vanishing points. And then we would have the width of that cube come and stop at that point. So in the end, what we have, let me go ahead and make this hopefully easier to see. would be there, right? And I typically don't like to erase the vanishing lines, but just for the sake of this. Okay. Now, if we were to have a hole or an opening, let's say that height, then here you would have, we'll go with that book, sorry. This would, this line here would vanish to that vanishing point and we could extend that line out. And then we could come down. Okay, so all lines, all vertical lines will always stay vertical. It's the horizontal lines that always vanish off to a vanishing point. So here we would have this edge here and we would draw there. Draw this little, have this line right there. So that if we were to draw this, that's what we would see. And if we were to do the same thing on this side, right, we would have our true line 
right here. And this would vanish off to there, come straight down. And now we have our opening and we can go ahead and take this to our vanishing point. And that's what we would have. Okay, go ahead and, sorry, I meant to do this earlier. Sorry, I'm opening up my, uh, that big block eraser. Um, I'll just use this one here. So we can really see how this works and what this actually kind of looks like. Right. So you have an object where again the key component is that what we call our true lines or our vertical lines are up and down and these do not change. Okay. But we have our vanishing lines that um vanish to these vanishing points. Okay. And so this is what would happen if we were to do something at I height. And we know it's at I height because of its relationship to the horizon line. Okay. But if we were to do this box above the horizon line, so let's say right up here. Okay. And we'd do the same thing to the vanishing points. This edge would go down to this vanishing point. Right, can you move your paper a little bit lower so we can see the top? Oh. Thank you. Go ahead and do that. And then go, actually, let me go and try to get in closer as well. Is that better? So then this would go down to this vanishing point. Okay, and these lines, the vertical lines stay the same. And they go to the bottom. And so what we have would be this cube. Now, the reason why the cube looks kind of stretched has to do with the location of our vanishing points, but we'll cover that in a minute, okay? But the idea is that if our line is above our horizon line, okay, then it looks as though we're looking at something from below the object, right? Because again, think of this, if the horizon line is the ocean and there's something above the ocean, then we're technically looking at the bottom of it, okay? And so that's the idea behind um, drawing an object that's above the horizon line. Now, vice versa, if we were to, let me move this down here and re-angle this. If we were to draw something that is below the horizon line, then every, all of our horizontal lines would go to our vanishing point. Okay. Vertical lines stay the same at the same location. Then these edges go out to our vanishing point there and our vanishing point there. What we have is something that looks as if we are at the looking at the top, at the top of the box, right? Um, and so this way you have, you know, so again, it has to do with the location of the object in relationship to the horizon line, right? 
that's the point that I'm trying to draw in at this moment. Okay. The other thing too is that our we have our vertical lines, which will extend out to the vanishing points. Okay. But the way that that this object or the reason why this object looks kind of stretched the way that it does is because of the placement of these vanishing points. Okay. And we get to choose the placement of these vanishing points. So then the question becomes, well, what's the difference between putting the vanishing points here or putting them farther out? So let me go ahead and now using that. Using that paper. One, put a little tape on, on this. This time I'm going to use a color pen so we can see the difference between the two. But we're going to go ahead and have actually a pencil for the horizon line. We'll have the same horizon line. Okay. But this time I'm going to put the vanishing point right there. I'm going to put the vanishing point right there. And I'm going to draw the same box here. Okay, so I'm going to draw right there. Sorry, I know it keeps getting. And we'll do the same thing. We'll kind of go, this time we kind of go lightly to the vanishing point. And I'm going lighter just because I'm drawing a pen. Um, and we're going to use the same verticals. Okay. And we could go ahead and use the same heights from the doors. So let's say we do this. Same vanishing points. And go farther out. I'm going to project out to the vanishing point, which is pretty much the same where the horizon line is there. I'm going to come down and from there go out to there. Okay. So, what's the difference? Go ahead and just quickly trace what we have here, and then we'll be able to see side by side what the difference is. So the spacing between this true line or this vertical line to here and the same over here is the same distance here to there and there, right? Um, yet they look different, okay? Oops, I forgot, I thought I drew this part. Oh no, well, they look, <clears throat> one looks more stretched Right, if we look at this wall here, if we look at this wall here, the angle here is, is more, um, it's a sharper, it's a deeper, larger angle. And that's causing this effect of something that is essentially kind of, you know, looking really, that's bad, looking really stretched as opposed to this one here, where the v, where the vanishing points were drawn farther away, okay, and so it makes this wall not look as stretched out. Okay, those are the two main qualities 
of this two point perspective have to do with your placement of the vanishing points. If you want something to look kind of exaggerated and, and stretched, we're going to want to put vanishing points close together. But the farther out the vanishing points are from one another, then the less stretched the object is going to look. On top of that, wherever you place your object in relationship to the horizon line, whether it's on the horizon line or above the horizon line or below the horizon line, is going to determine how this object is, is going to be shown. So if I'm to draw, a, if I was to draw an object and I wanted to kind of accentuate the bottom portion of this object as if we're kind of looking at it from below, then that means I'm going to draw it above my horizon line, right? We want to see the bottom portion, so we want to be looking up at it. So it's as if we're standing on the horizon line and therefore we want to look up at it. If we want to see the top, then it's as if we are standing on the horizon line, looking down, and therefore it's below us. And that's going to show us more the top, okay? That's the fundamental task of two-point perspective, okay? Now, the reason why this becomes useful is because there's gonna come a time at some point where you're gonna be on site, you're gonna be talking to your teacher or someone, and they're gonna say, you're gonna to try to explain something, and they can say, well, I don't know what you mean. Can you draw it out, right? And at that point, that's when you're going to want to, you know, draw something out. And you could say, okay, I'm going to, I want to do a box, right? And I want to do this, and I want to show that I have a window here. And I want to show, or I want to show that I have these doors right there. And maybe I do place a window here. But you'll understand that this line and this line and this line all need to match this line, which are at an angle, because they are all going to a vanishing point, right? And the goal is to be able to draw this without having to draw your horizon line and your vanishing points every single time. And so this is where the practice comes into play. This is where you, once you do this over and over and over and over and over again, you begin to kind of set imaginary vanishing points and imaginary horizon lines so that you don't actually have to draw them, okay? And so, <clears throat> um, but all that only comes with practice, okay? So that's why each week we're going to be um, doing these two-point perspectives, okay? Um, so let me go ahead and Get another sheet. Uh, get another sheet of paper, and I want to cover one last kind of topic, um, which is all. Which we're all, it's also going to talk about kind of what the assignment is going to be. So the project or the, yeah, the assignment is going to be to draw two objects. Okay. I know this is architecture and interior architecture, and don't worry, we're going to get to a time when we're actually drawing spaces. But I want to start off small. Okay, I want to start off small um, so that we actually have something to, you know, just so we can draw something out. Um, reasonable in scale, okay? So <clears throat> what you're going to do in your sketches is do the same thing. You're gonna start off with a horizon line. And I want you to draw the horizon line, okay? And then the next step is going to be to determine your vanishing points. Okay, do I want this thing to look stretched or do I want it to look, um, you know, less less stretched? Right, something a bit flatter out. And I'm going to say I want to do something a bit flatter out. So I'm going to put a vanishing point over here and a vanishing point over here. Okay. Now, the other thing, too, that, um, yeah, that, I, that we didn't cover 
but is that right now I'm kind of placing the vanishing points kind of symmetrical to wherever the midpoint would be, It'd be somewhere right there, right? But technically we don't have to do that. These vanishing points don't have to be um, kind of symmetrical away from the midpoint. Like I could put one vanishing point here. Let me quickly just show what that looks like. Yeah, we'll talk about this. Um, we, there is going to be a portion in the class where we go get deeper into two point perspectives, but it's going to be more in kind of in terms of um, interior or exterior um, project development. So, like, how do you, how do we add to a render? How do we add to a 3D model? Right. So anyways, let's say we have our vanishing point there and we have another one over here. And I have my box right here. Right. So like the distance from here to there is not the same from there to there. That's perfectly fine. We could do that. This would go to vanishing point there, 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 and there. And we can go ahead and do our vertical here and our vertical there. Right. And it's kind of the same thing, you know, if we draw an opening there, this part would go to that vanishing point. And the same thing over here. This goes to this vanishing point. This is going to come straight down. And there we go. So what happens when you do vanishing points that are not parallel or not kind of in the same distance is one side gets kind of smaller and the we end up seeing more of another side. Right, we end up seeing more of, there's more of a focus on this wall than there is on this one. Um, and so this, again, comes with more practice, playing with the vanishing points. So what I want to do now is I'm going to draw a um, kind of a bookcase type object that I have here. And which essentially is going to be kind of the assignment, right? Which is to draw objects around you, look around you and take the object and try to draw it freehand using this method, using this two, this two point perspective um, method, okay? Now the part that is still left to cover is kind of proportion, okay? And kind of what we're going to do first is box something out, okay? And that's kind of the first step to, to something to drawing a, an object. Now I do recommend that for the first few weeks or the first couple sketches, pick easy objects, pick rectilinear, straight, boxy-like objects, okay? Don't get um, ahead of yourself and start doing, um, trying to do two-point perspectives of kind of curvy things um, until you feel comfortable with it, okay? So what we wanna do first is, um, I'm going to do, so I'm looking at a at my bookcase um, that's kind of in front of me and it's your generic metal bookcase, right? Um, and what I want to do first is box it out. And okay? actually, you know what, this bookcase isn't, I thought it was going to be good, but the bookcase is already a book, uh, is already a box. So I want to do something that's um, not a box. So I have a, a, a um, a, a wall hung um, bookcase and it's not a box. And but I, what I want to do first is box it out. Okay, so I'm going to, I want to take a look at this a little bit more on from like a top view, right? I want to focus a little bit more on the top side. I don't want to be completely down. So I don't want to draw it all the way down here. 
but I do want it to be some something down, you know, get somewhat of a downward look on it. And so what I want to do is look at the object um, and kind of box out the proportion of the object, right? Where does this thing actually kind of, how does this thing actually kind of fit inside of a box? If I was to put it inside a cardboard box, what would that cardboard box look like? Okay. So I'm going to start off with this um, line here. This is known as a true line. Um, don't worry about the names of, of that just yet. We'll cover that down the line and why it's called a true line. But I'm going to say this is the height. Okay, so this is the, the height of my cardboard box. And now I'm going to go ahead and take it up to the vanishing point. Okay. And as I'm looking at this, um, I do get to focus a little bit on on the um, on the top portion. Okay. And if I wanted to do something more, then you know you could begin to bring it down farther down and, and so on. Actually, why don't we do that? Let's go ahead and bring this down. Sorry. Go ahead and bring this down a little bit more. I'm going to bring it down here. Okay. And so we're going to go to the vanishing points. Now, when you're doing these, especially for the homework sketches, I'm not looking for picture perfect, photorealistic sketches. This is meant to be used as an exercise for you to study and understand these concepts. So, you know, right now, you can draw the line and you can say, oh, wait, that's, you know, the same way I just did it. It was like, oh, you know what? I want to be able to see more of the top. So let me go ahead and bring that down. Okay. By doing this more and more often, you'll get uh, more and more comfortable with the, how the placement of how things should be in relationship to the horizon line and the, and the vanishing points. All right. So my bookshelf is about that much in width. Okay, and now from here, I'm going to go ahead and go out to the vanishing point. And it's about this long. And from here, I'm going to go out to this vanishing point. And so you can begin to see, you can begin to see um, that the object is going to be inside this box. Okay? And that's typically how we want to start off with an object when we're trying to to do a two-point perspective of, of an object. <clears throat> From here, it has a little, it's about three quarter inch and comes about halfway into my box, which is about right there. So I'm just gonna draw this vertical here and take this out to the vanishing point, okay? Now notice, again, I'm not using any, um, I'm not using any straight edge, any ruler, and you shouldn't either. That's not the point. And then this is also about three quarter inch thick on this side. And then this goes back. So I'm going to take it out to the vanishing point and kind of bring it down, okay, out here. Now, it's really important <clears throat> how to hold the pencil and how to kind of take these strokes out to the vanishing point. The closer you hold the pencil to the tip, the harder the line's going to be, right? The farther away you move your hand, the lighter the line's going to be. So when I'm drawing this, you'll notice that my hand is farther out. Okay, and we're trying to—you're just letting the pencil glide over the pen, the uh, the paper, because we're not trying to get these really hard, solid lines yet. Okay. The other thing too is that when I'm going to the vanishing points and I'm drawing a line. This becomes a really tricky thing because oftentimes if I have to draw a line from here to here, right, with the hand farther back, so I have even less control, it's very hard to try to do it in one stroke because if, and most people, especially those who, when you're just starting off, and you don't have that eye-hand coordination that takes time, and, you know, I'm no 
pro at it because I'm not a hand illustrator. Um, but oftentimes you're going to see people trying to like connect these two and they're going to end up like that completely off. Right. And it just takes time and practice. The one kind of advice that I could give you is once you start the line, don't look at the line you're creating. Keep your eye on here and your hand should follow that. We'll end up following that point, hopefully. <laughs> but that also comes with, with, um, with time, right? So don't put your eye on the line as you're drawing. Keep your eye at the destination point over here. So when I'm coming over here and I have to draw a line from this point out over here, I'm going very lightly. And you're seeing me kind of very lightly kind of go from this point and I'm even coming back. Okay, so I'm kind of going back and forth in this back and forth motion. Okay, but I only do it once or twice. Um, and then by then it gives me just enough of a line to be able to, um, to be able to turn it into a solid later on or a stronger, thicker line later on when I'm gonna go back and kind of um, really make this a bit more permanent, okay? So I'm gonna come back, so I'm down here. At this point, I'm going to go from this point to this vanishing point, okay? And then from this point, I'm gonna go back And then I'm gonna get the bottom portion here and this goes back over here. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna come back over here and this is gonna go, sorry, it's also my body's in a weird angle. Okay. And then this ends right there at this point. I have that, and this there's a vertical that comes right over. Oops, right around there. Okay, and that's the bookcase. So now, what I would do is what we call kind of darkening the profile is go back with my pencil, and notice now my hand placement is closer to is closer to the edge here. And now I could actually just kind of trace this out. And there we have it. This is what I have. Then I would place, you know, then you can place books and things like that. And that's the book case. Um, <clears throat> so that's the idea, right? Box it out. You draw the proportions and those are the verticals. The verticals never change and the verticals are really just talking about the width. How wide is something from the other, right? That's where we place our verticals. The verticals also determine the height. So where does one thing start? Where does one thing end? And then from there, the way we connect the points is by just drawing them out to the vanishing points, okay? Again, this is going to take practice. So if you don't get it right the first time, don't worry about it, don't freak out, okay? It just comes with practice. But the assignment for this week um, is to do two sketches. Okay, two sketches of two separate objects. These sketches should not take more than 10 minutes each. So 20 minutes total, okay? Um, I don't want you guys spending way too much time on, on these things. It's not meant to take, it's not meant to take a whole lot of time um, because again, the idea, the way that we use sketching, the way we do hand uh, two point perspective is not the way we would do it if we were an illustrator or you know an artist or anything like that. For us, it's just sketching an idea, right? So we need to be able to be quick. Um, we need to be able to, to be quick and get the general idea across, okay? So I don't want you guys spending too much time um, on this. Uh, 10 minutes per sketch, max.
Okay. I'm also not looking for amazing artwork pieces. This is a studying skill, right? It's, I want you guys to do it. I want you guys to study it. I want you guys to say like, okay, that's cool. That's how that worked. Or, you know, let me see what does this do if I do it this way, right? I want you guys to, it's a trial and error and that's how we learn, okay? So don't worry about, oh no, Javier's not gonna like it. It's, you know, it's, I want you guys really learning this stuff. Um, and so I won't, in order to do that, you need to stop you need to not put that type of pressure on, on you and really just focus on what, what it is that um, I'm asking you to do, right? Which is just practice this two-point perspective. I also want you guys, to, when you're done, to go around and darken up the, the, the lines, but I do not want you guys to erase the horizon line, the vanishing point, or your um, vanishing lines. Keep all that in there so that we could see how you did it, right? And if you can't, if you get stuck, then I could look at it and I could say, oh, well, that's because this, you know, this line needed to have gone this way instead of that way, right? Um, and I could help you out that way too, if I could see where, you know, lines are going and which direction these, these lines are, are going to, okay? Mm -hmm.